All right, I'm going to explain what monotonic stacks are and why they're useful. So monotonic stacks are two types. It's either a monotonically increasing stack or a monotonically decreasing stack. So for increasing stacks, all the elements in the stack are always increasing. For a decreasing stack, all the elements are always decreasing. So let's just go through an example. Uh, so let's say I have this array of integers, 1, 3, 10, 7, 5, OK? And let's say I want to push. Uh, Let's say this is, let's call this an increasing stack. So monotonically increasing. I want to push the one and go ahead and do that. And go ahead and push the three, go ahead and push the 10. And notice that these are increasing so far. So far it's like a normal stack. We haven't done anything special, but then things get um, different when we want to push the seven. So uh, seven is no longer, if we just push the seven, this breaks our property of having an increasing stack. So we need to actually pop the 10 and then we can push the seven. Okay. And to push the five, we actually have to pop the seven first, then push the five. And we can go ahead and push 24. And for, to push the last element, we actually have to pop 24, pop five, pop three. Oh, shoot, not the three. And then uh, push the four. So uh, now we have, uh, we've pushed all these elements into our stack while maintaining the increasing property. Um, and then for decreasing, it's just the opposite. You just maintain the decreasing property. So let's, just, I could do it really fast. So uh, let's say we push the one, we can't push the three because we have, uh, that would just be increasing. So we need to pop the one, then push the three. Now to push the 10, we need to pop the three, then we can push the 10. And we can go ahead and push the seven, push the five. And look, this is nice and decreasing. But then when we want to push the 24, we need to actually pop 5, pop 7, pop 10, then we push the 24. Then we can just go ahead and push the 4 at the end. And we've maintained our decreasing property while pushing all these elements into the stack. So cool. Why is this useful? It's useful because let's just say we have an ink. Uh, let's actually let's just go with this. Let's say we have a decreasing stack. For a decreasing stack, we can find the previous greater and the next greater elements of an array in linear time. So let's say, let's just actually go through an example. Um, so let's just do the decreasing stack again while finding the previous greater elements. So we're going to start from the beginning of the array. We're going to push the one and we need to, oh, one more thing to find this previous greater element. Whatever element I end up on top of in the stack, that is my previous greater element. So I'm going to push this one here. And there are no previous greater elements to one because there's literally nothing to the left of it. OK, we can go ahead and push. We have to pop the one in order to push the three because it's a decreasing stack. And again, three has no decreasing elements. One is not greater than three. So if three has no. Um, no previous graders, then we do the same. So for 10, we have to pop the three, then push the 10. 10 also has no previous graders. Now for seven, we can go ahead and just pop and push the seven onto the stack. And now whatever element is underneath me, that is my previous grader element. So 10 is the previous grader element of seven. And if you look at the array, 10 is the previous grader of seven. Cool. So now we can go ahead and push the five. 7 is the previous greater element of 5. All right. Now, to push the 24, again, we have to pop everything. Pop the 5, pop the 7, pop the 10, put the 24. And now whatever element 4 ends up on top of, which is 24, that is our previous greater element. And oh, again, 24 has no previous greater so, because it's sitting on top of nothing. And I could... Mm, I think that's good. OK. so. De an increasing, or actually no. So let's say we wanted to find the next greater element. So right now we just found the previous greater elements. We wanted to find the next greater elements. It's actually super simple. We could just flip the array around. And by flipping it around, I mean just, so we started uh, pushing from the beginning. Well, we could just push starting from the end of the array in order to find the, the next greater element. So for example, I would push the four. Um, then we'd have to pop the four, push the 24. Then we push the five, and now 24 is the next greater element of five. 
Then we, in order to push the seven, I need to pop the five. And now 24 is the next greater element of uh, seven. And then we, in order to push the 10, so now we're here. I want to push the 10. I need to pop the seven. And 24 is actually the next greater element of 10. And then we could push the three. And 10 is the next greater element of three. And then we could just push the one. And three is the next greater element of one. Cool. So we just did the previous greater and the next greater elements just by starting either from the beginning or from the end of the array. And if you wanted to change this to an increasing stack, that's how you would find your previous lesser and your next lesser elements. Um, so, but I think you guys could figure that out, how to do that just based on this. Okay. Uh, it's basically, it's literally the same thing. All right. So I'm just going to go through some code examples of how you, how we would uh, push and pop to a decreasing stack to find our previous greater and next greater elements. So for this first technique right here, uh, this is just, we're assuming that this is a decreasing stack up here this is where I declared it. And we're going to just populate, we're going to populate this previous greater array. So I'm not messing around with this next greater array right now. I'm just populating this one. So let's just look at this block of code here. So all we're doing here is we're looping through the array. And if the stack isn't empty and the thing on top of the stack, and the reason I do stack.peak inside of the array is because I'm actually storing the index when I push. So here you can see I'm looping through the array with the indexes, right? I equals zero, I, that's obviously an index. And when I actually push onto the stack, I'm pushing the index and not the actual value of that's at that index. So, uh, okay, so let me go back to this while loop. So if the stack is an empty and the value in the array breaks our property, so in this case, if it's less than or equal to the thing I'm about to push onto the stack, well, then we need to pop it. And we're just going to keep repeating this while loop until that property is no longer broken. Okay. And once we've done all the popping that we need to do, we can, uh, we now know what our previous greater element is. So uh, if the stack is empty, there is no previous greater element. So, be, so that means we just put negative one in there. And if the stack isn't empty, well then whatever we're about to be on top of, uh, that is our previous greater element. And then we just push our index. Okay. And then we would just repeat this for every element. Okay. So that's, pretty simple of how you would calculate the previous grader. Now for the, the next grader, it's literally the exact same thing as, so it's the exact same thing as this, but we're doing it down here. So the only difference is we're starting from the end of the array. So I equals the last element in the array, and then we're going to just decrement all the way down to the beginning. And yeah, it's actually literally the exact same code. So I won't go over that too much. And then now we're just storing it in the next grader uh, array instead of the previous grader. Okay, so let's move on to the next example. So this little block of code is doing the exact same thing as, or it's accomplishing the, pre the exact same thing as the previous example. So in the previous example, you know, we looped from the end of the array to the beginning. But here, uh, we're actually able to loop from the beginning of the array to the end and still populate our next grader, uh, our next grader array. And the reason is because at the very beginning, I just populate the next grader array. I fill it up with, uh, well, here I fill it up with array dot length, but it could also just be a uh, negative one. So either one is fine. As long as you just know, you know what you put in there to signify that there is no next grader element. So in this case, I did array dot length and just so we're clear, array.length, there are seven elements in this array. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in our example, so we're going to be initializing all the elements to seven in this array. And the reason this works is because once we go through this block of code, like, you know, we loop through all the elements, we check if the stack is empty, we check if it breaks our property, and we pop if it does. What ends up happening is that there are actually, there are actually some elements uh, left over in the stack. And whatever elements are left over in the stack, uh, they just don't get popped to populate our next greater array. And I can actually show you the output. 
So if you look over here to the right, there is a, I printed out what it looks like after this code is done. So here's the print statement that prints out the, the our stack, the previous grader array and the next grader array. If you look over here, the stack, after all that code ran, still had a five and a six in there. Or th these are actually, so these are indexes of the array. So this is index five, index six. And notice index five, index six in our next grader array has the array length that I had in the beginning. So that's just an alternative. If you like the other way, if you want to do it the, the way where you loop from the beginning to the, or from the end to the beginning, and then, yeah, you could stick with that. And this is just an alternative that I thought was cool. Okay. So, uh, and this is actually, I use this in a coding problem, but anyway, moving on. Okay. So next example, uh, it accomplishes the exact same thing as, previous two, as the previous two examples. So we're going to populate our next grader array and we're going to start loop from the beginning to the end, except there's one little thing in here. Notice I is less than or equal to the array length. And we're not going to have a index out of bounds error or anything. Uh, the reason is because is, is because in the while condition, we check is I equal to the last thing. If it, if I is equal to the last, uh, or if I is equal to the length of the array, then just keep popping. And this will take care of those straggling elements. Like remember over here, we had the five and six at the end. Well, these, the five will get popped. The six will get popped. And we're just going to set the next greater element to the array length because I will be set will be equal to the array length, you know, that'll be true here. Then the next greater element index five and index six will be set to that array length. Okay. And if you wanted to set this to negative one, you know, you'd probably just do like a ternary, like if I equals array length, set it to negative one, otherwise set it to um, I. Okay, so for this last example, uh, so far I've shown you how to get the next greater elements and the previous greater elements in two different loops. But you can, Let's just say that you could get both in one loop. Uh, and I'm going to show you how. So let's just say I'm looping from the beginning of the array. And we're going to do it with this example here. So 20, 15, 17, 5, 3, 5, 1. Okay. So, let's just, so we're going to stick with our decreasing stack. I'm going to push the 20. I'm going to push the 15. Now, whatever I, again, whatever element I end up on top of, this is my previous grader element. So 20 is previous grader of 15. Now, when I want to push the 17, I need to kick out the 15. So whatever element I pop, that means that 17 is my next greater element. So 17 is the next greater element of whatever gets popped out. So I'm gonna pop out the 15. I am seven. That means I am 15's next greater element. Now I'm gonna push the five. This is the previous greater. So whatever element I end up on top of is my previous greater. Now I'm going to push the three, five is previous greater of three. And now let's say I push the five. Let's say, I, so I'm going to push the five in a second. So first we have to pop the three, which means five is the next greater element of three. And we can see that, right? So five is the next greater element of three here. So we're going to pop the three. Now here's where you have to make a decision. Either Either one of these, either the next grader or the previous grader arrays, has to be either next grader or equal or previous grader or equal. Uh, but only one of them will have the equal elements to it or the previous equal element to it. Um, so let me let me just uh, go through the example of why that is. So I'm on this five right now, and I so remember I had the three, I popped the three. And I want to push this five. So here I can either decide to leave this five here, but that means that my previous greater element, this, that would just mean that this is my previous greater or equal element. If I decide to kick this guy, that means that 17 is my previous greater element. But because I kick that five, this five is then the next greater or equal element of this five here. So I'm gonna say that one more time. If I decide to, so this five is this five. If I wanna push this five, 
and if I decide to pop this guy, that means I am this five. This five is that five's next greater element. Okay. So I just push this five onto this onto the stack, and then I could just push the one, and that this means that five is my previous uh, greater element. Okay. So we're done. Um, and that's all this code is accomplishing here. And I just decided uh, to make this previous greater or equal. And the re you could just change that with that. So like if I did less than or equal here, that would mean that this is next greater or equal. And this would just be previous greater. Okay, so that's it. Um, and this is actually useful in another problem that I'm going to cover in another video. Uh, so if you, so it'll actually be the next video. So if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see the next video, you could subscribe if you want. Okay. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.